Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefine Horizons. This is another video in our Field Survey Friday series. We're going to talk today some more about total station operations. Uh, we had another video where we just talked about uh, the, what I call kind of the traditional total station setup. So in this video we're actually going to cover two other operations. We're going to cover what's called a resection and then we're going to cover uh, the process for a side shot. Okay, I'm doing these videos to help out some of my office staff. They're testing for the CST and they don't get as much field experience. We do occasionally try and drag them out to the field, but, uh, but it's tough. It can be a challenge. And so uh, they need to understand that the equipment we're using in the field and how it works and what we do with it. So that's part of the reason why we're doing these videos. So let's talk about a resection. Okay, so a resection is where it's a little different from a traditional Total station setup. I, I don't particularly like resections, so you're not allowed to use a resection at my shop unless you have no other choice. Okay, and we'll talk about when you might be in that situation as a party chief. Okay, but I'm going to walk you through how a resection works because sometimes you do you do get in a situation where that's your only option. And a, and a lot of other shops use resections all the time. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna say that we can't see between these three points okay, for some reason. So uh, we're gonna say there's a, a, a building here. Okay, and there's a, there's a big clump of trees right here that we can't see through, thick set of trees. And um, we're going to say uh, there's another building right here. Okay, so we can't see between one, two, and three. Those are our control points. All right, but if we set up right here on this point we're going to call A, if we set up on A, we can see to one, to two, and to three. We can see all three points from A, but you can't see in between these points. Now my shop, if you can see in between either of these pairs here, three and two, one and two, or one and three, you're not allowed to do a resection. You have to set up on the pair, okay? But in this scenario I've sketched out, you can't do that. And this does happen sometimes. So what is a resection? So in a resection, you set up over a new point that doesn't have a coordinate value, and you shoot two known points to, to calculate the coordinate at your setup point. So you set up on A, you go into the resection routine in your total station, okay, and the first thing it's, it's going to tell you, shoot your first point. So you shoot RH2, okay, then it says shoot your second point, you shoot RH1, the order doesn't matter. You could shoot one and then two, or two and then one, it doesn't matter, okay, and then what the software on board the total stationer and the data collector is going to do is it's going to calculate uh, the coordinate for A. Okay. Now, in some resection routines, they'll actually let you shoot a third or fourth or fifth point, okay, which which results in a better, res gives you a more accurate result, okay, for the coordinate for A. That's not how I do resections at my shop. So, at my shop, you would shoot one and two to calculate your coordinate, and then after you have your coordinate calculated you would uh, backsight one from A, and you'd shoot a check shot on number three. So we wouldn't want to use three in the resection. We want an independent check on it. That's how we do it at my shop. Okay, now let's just talk about the math that the total station is actually doing, or the data collector. Okay, so we've got RH1 over here. We've got RH2 over here. Okay, now when we set up at A, we're going to measure a vertical angle and a slope distance to two, okay? And the total station is going to convert that into a horizontal distance. We'll call it HD1. It's going to measure a slope, a slope distance and a vertical angle to number one, and it's going to use that to calculate, let's call this HD1, and we'll call this HD2, okay? So two horizontal distances. Now, if you know the two coordinates here, which we do, we know these two coordinates, okay? So we could actually draw a line in between these. We know this, this distance, we'll call it HD3. Okay, you can actually solve 
this location here, and there's a couple ways you can think about it. So one is, if you draw a circle from two, with HD2 as the radius, and you draw a circle from one, with HD1 as the radius, those two circles are going to intersect at two points. Hey, let me just draw an example over here. So we've got RH2, RH1, we know we're this distance from RH2, and we know I'm going to draw it in a different color. We know we're this other distance from RH1. Those two circles intersect at only two locations. Okay, so in a typical resection routine, you have to tell the software which side of the line you're on, the left or the right, because it's got two possible solutions, and it needs to pick one. Okay, you can also do this. This is also a law of sines calculation. Okay, so side, side, side. I think that's law of sines. Side, 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 law of sines calculation. Um, so you can, do it, you can do it with intersecting circles, okay, and the, the uh, coordinate geometry formula for circles, or you can do it with law of sines. I don't want to get into the math here. I will do another video on law of sines that will teach you how to do this. But that's the math that the software is doing. Okay, so this is a way to set up over a, a point with, an, with no assigned coordinate yet. Shoot two other points with the coordinate and calculate this value. Now it's nice if you have a third point you can check into. Okay, so in my shop, this is the only time you're allowed to do a resection. Okay, is when you've got control on a site that's not intervisible. Okay, if you have intervisible control, in my shop, you have to do a traditional station setup. You're not allowed to resection. Now, why do people like resections? People like resections because they're lazy. Okay, so let's just say that we had something. <clears throat> let's say we've got a, a corner of a building over here. Okay, and we want to shoot the corner of this building. But we can't see the corner of the building from two or one, but we can see it from A. Okay, but now in this example, let's say that one and two are intervisible. You can see between them. Okay. Now here's what a lazy crew will do. A lazy crew will go out, they'll set up, they'll set a nail or a control point, whatever, at A. Okay, and they'll resection a one and two, and then they'll shoot the building corner. Okay, but at my shop, you're not allowed to do that. Okay, now in that scenario with the lazy crew, they did one setup to get their shot. Okay, but now let's go over here and see how Redefined Horizons crew would do it. If they can see between RH1 and 2, I make them set up on 1, backsight 2, shoot A in with the traditional, do a traditional station setup here and do what we call a traverse to A. I make them traverse over to A. Okay, then when they get to A, I make them set up on A, backsight 1, check 2, then they can shoot their building corner. Okay, but that requires two setups. Okay, so a lazy field crew will do this. Now, I don't like that because in this scenario, if you just resection between these two, you have no check on your control. If you have any error between one and two or any error in your setup, you're going to get a bad value on your building corner. Okay, The way I do it with the intervisible setup, traverse to A and then you get a check shot on two. Right, So you're going to confirm there that you don't have any error. In this new point, you also get your backside check between one and two so you'll know that you don't have a problem in between these two monuments. Okay, with your published coordinates on those monuments. Okay, so that's why people like resections because they're lazy. Okay, but it's a shortcut and it, and it reduces the amount of redundancy you have in your field survey. Okay, now one other quick thing I want to tell you about resections. Okay, the best kind of resection you can have, the angles are roughly between 40 and let's say 70 degrees. Okay, so we'll go back to our example, RH number one, RH number two. Okay. So this has to do with strength of figure. Okay, so the strongest figure you can get for your resection is if your new point A, okay, if this angle here is between let's say 40 degrees and 70 degrees. The strongest angle you can get is 60 degrees. That's what you get with an equilateral triangle. Okay, so here's what really sucks. If you have a, if A is here and this angle is really wide, so let's say this is 170 degrees, that's really poor strength of figure. This is going to be a crappy resection. You're going to get a bad result on A. Okay, or if your angle is really narrow, so for way down here, 
down on the floor and our angle is 10 degrees, that is also a really crappy resection. You're not going to get a good result with that. It has to do with strength of figure. Okay. And uh, I need to do another video on strength of figure, but basically, if you, if you look at the example I gave you, okay, if we're real close to these two lines, okay, and we can imagine we've got a line now coming in, they're really shallow, okay, and we move one of these lines just a little bit, this is our angle error, okay, if we change where those are at, we're going to move the intersection of those two lines a, a huge distance, whereas if we're down at 60 degrees, Okay, and we move these lines, we get a little bit of angle here, it could change the direction of these lines. Okay, it results in a much smaller uh, bubble, air bubble. Okay, so good strength of figure is a small air bubble on the intersection of these lines. A, a poor strength of figure gives you a much wider air bubble, so you're not going to get as good a result on the coordinates that you're calculating for your resection point, your new control point. Okay, I need to do another video about strength of figure, but. All right, now let's just talk about traverse side shots for a couple minutes. I, I put these two together because uh, you don't have to know a lot. There's not a lot to side shot. So side shot, after you've set up, done your, your station setup, either with a traditional station setup or with a resection. Okay, a side shot. So we've done our backside to two. We're at one, instruments at one. Okay, we've done our backside for our station setup. Now we want to come over and shoot a point. Maybe it's the lid of a center of a manhole lid. And whatever it is, doesn't matter. But in this case, this example will make it a manhole lid. Okay, so what we do, we backsided our H2 on our station setup. Now we turn to what's called our foresight. Okay, so this is the prism now. The prism's down here at our manhole in the center of the manhole lid. Don't laugh at my candy cane prism, prism and rod. Okay, so we turn an angle, sight the back sight at two. We turn an angle over to the manhole, the prism on the manhole. Okay, and then we shoot a distance to the prism and record two angles. We record the vertical angle, okay, and we record the horizontal angle. Okay, and the total station measures the slope distance and then uses that to calculate the horizontal distance and actually. This isn't quite right because what the total station measures is the zenith angle and then calculates the vertical angle. Okay. Calculates the vertical angle. Okay, so these three measurements, one, two, three, two angles and one distance. Okay, those are the components of a side shot. Those are the components of a side shot. You need all three to calculate the coordinate at the rod. Okay, in this case, the center of the main hole. So that's what a side shot is. Now, let's say you're going to turn to another point. So over here, we've got a building corner we want to shoot. You don't have to recite the back sight. You've already set your back sight. You've set your zero, like we talked about in the station setup video. You can turn, shoot the manhole, and you don't have to go back to the back sight. You just keep turning over to the building corner. Sight the building corner, put your prism up there, you can switch to your reflecto CDM. Shoot the corner of the building. That's your second side shot. Side shot. Now, ever so many shots, ten or twenty or thirty shots. It's a good idea to go back and recheck your back sight because your back sight could have settled or shifted or been kicked. Your your instrument could have settled or the tripod could have been shifted or bumped. Right. So you want to go back and make sure that you've got still got a good back sight. Okay. Every ever so many shots. Okay. If you fail to do that, let's say you, you you're doing your survey and you're taking side shots and you bump the tri you bump the tripod, you kick it. I've done it before many times, okay? And you don't go back to check your back sight, okay? Now everything that you shoot from the after the kick is not going to have a good coordinate value on it. All those side shots, those points aren't going to have good values because you just kicked your you just kicked your tripod, you knocked your instrument off of its zero. Okay, so every few I don't know, 10, 20, 30 shots. You gotta go back, check your back sight, make sure you still got good zero, okay, on your back sight, right? Or anytime you think you might have bumped the instrument, the tripod, or the back sight might have been bumped, you gotta go back, recheck your back sight, okay? And then, of course, always at my shop, before we tear down at a setup, 
We shoot our backside, store that backside check, backside check goes in the field notes. Okay, we're gonna talk some more about field notes. We're gonna have a separate video on field notes, but you should always have two backside checks for every setup. When you're turning side shots, you should have a backside check at the beginning in your station setup. You should have a back, backside check at the end before you tear down the instrument. If both those backside checks are good, the beginning and the end, and your backside checks in the middle are good, that means you've probably got good data. All right? Okay, so that was resection and side shot operations in the total station. I think I've only got one more operation I want to teach you guys with total stations, maybe two. So we'll talk about laying out grid lines, and then we'll just talk about how you push line out with a total station. We don't do either one of those things very often in my shop because we don't do a lot of construction, but I'll teach you guys about them. Okay, and then we'll do another video that just talks about um, what the field notes for a total station survey should look like. Okay, so appreciate you guys watching this Field Survey Friday video. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you like these videos, we'll do some more. We'll do some more Field Survey Friday videos. I want to talk about leveling, digital leveling, and traditional leveling. And then we got to talk a lot about GPS. So there'll be some more of these Field Survey Friday videos coming. So hit subscribe if you want to catch those. And thanks for watching.